Joshua Norton was somebody who came here in 1849 from South Africa. He'd been left an inheritance, so I think he wanted to take the money that he had, come to some place where there would be opportunity, and certainly San Francisco was that place. There was one point in 1849 when the population of the city doubled every 10 days. The infrastructure developed uh, instantaneously. It was a harem scarum world of a boom town. San Francisco is the only city in the United States which at the very beginnings of its experience as a city uh, is inhabited by people from all over the country and all over the world. I mean, he turned $40,000 into $250,000 in four years. So he was one of the wealthiest men in town, one of the most influential. And he got the idea that he could make quite a lot of money by buying up a lot of rice and cornering the market on it. So he invested a lot of money in rice. And just as he had the market cornered, several ship loaded to the gunnels with rice came in the Golden Gate and he was ruined. Norton managed to carry on for a few years by having other business dealings, anything to stave off bankruptcy. Disappeared for a couple of years. September 17, 1859, he walks into the offices of the San Francisco Bulletin newspaper. He hands George Fitch his proclamation declaring himself Emperor of the United States. And Fitch decides to print it. Any other city in the world, they'd lock him up, but San Francisco encourages eccentrics. So they embraced him as the emperor for the next 21 years. What we obviously see happening here, because he had no visible means of support, is that someone is helping him out just on the very basics. I mean, he had a small room in, in a boarding house in San Francisco. He had free passage in all the streetcars and cable cars. The theater, seats were always ready for the emperor should he decide to go. With the Transcontinental Railroad, San Francisco was attracting tourists. A lot of people came here and wanted to see the emperor. His story had got nationwide press. There was a whole cottage industry that sprang up around him. San Franciscans liked the idea that there was an emperor and he liked being the emperor. It was a perfect fit. One of the contributions that, that, that uh, Norton has made, at least symbolically, to San Francisco is his great delight in characters. The idea is you lose everything and you rebuild your life here. San Francisco is about, is a frontier city. One of the few frontier cities where people can come and reinvent themselves. If somebody comes here and they want to reinvent themselves, we again and again say, that's okay. If you want to be that, you can be that. After moving to San Francisco, I remember hearing about the Emperor's story for the first time. It's one of the many things that made me fall in love with this great city. Norton played a unique role in shaping San Francisco and lives on in popular culture. Mark Twain used him as a basis of Mad King and Huckleberry Finn. Four operas have been written about his story and over half a dozen books. Named after the emperor are no less than three bands, one record label, a handful of songs, and an absinthe. However, the only video concerning the emperor are a few TV shows from the 50s and brief segments on basic cable. The Emperor's Story deserves a full-length documentary. I've been editing and producing video for 14 years over hundreds of projects. I've done everything from corporate videos, food and wine, scientific documentaries, and even feature film. But I've yet to choose a project to call my own. With production help from my partner Kat Shreve, we already have a great start. We've been immersed in research, conducted some great interviews, and brought on board creative Bay Area professionals. I take my responsibility as a biographer seriously and I have the experience to get it done. If you help us fund this Kickstarter, I promise to do the Emperor's story justice. Mm -hmm.